So as a running and running shoe enthusiast, I get pretty caught up in the latest running shoe technology, and that's what a lot of the channels focused on, to be honest. A lot of that new technology isn't really necessarily the best for the beginner runners, and the reason for that is, it can feel kind of awkward to go run walking in a shoe like the Nike Zoom X Invincible, for example, is a perfect shoe for me. I love running in it and all that stuff, but walking around in it is extremely awkward. So I wouldn't recommend it for someone trying to get into running through run walk. So what I thought to do is do a video focusing on shoes that I think would be best for run walking for you people just trying to get into running because that's the majority of people. Not everyone is a running enthusiast as much as we in the running community might think so. We want to get as many people into this running space and get out there run walking so they can eventually become running shoe addicts like us and line the pockets of Nike and all those other people. Let's talk about my top five shoes for run walking. Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name is Brendan. I'm a Halifax, Nova Scotia-based runner who has lost over 150 pounds through the power of running and habit change. On this channel, we talk about the strategies and tools to help us become faster runners and be healthier. Whatever that means for you, it could be to lose a little bit of weight through one walking, whatever that may be for you, we talk about on the channel. So if that's something you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button right down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, share it with a friend. It helps the channel out so much. Now, let's get into the top five shoes for run walking. So what did I look for to put a shoe in this category? So just just so you know, this is all my personal opinion, all the shoes I did buy by myself. So keep that in mind, it could be different for you. So what I look for in the shoe to put in this category is I want the shoe to be kind of neutral in the sense that it's not so aggressive. Like for example, the glide ride I showed you there, it has a very aggressive curve and it can feel extremely awkward when I'm out there walking. I want the shoe to be relatively flat underfoot and provide a bit of firmness, not super squishy like you get in the Zoom X Invincible for example, because I find that it's just not the best for slower paces when you have a very squishy foam. It can be quite unstable. So the shoes in the category are slightly firmer and feel pretty neutral underfoot in the sense that it's not extremely aggressive curves. Now, let's start off with the number one. So starting off our list, we have the Hoka Clifton 7 or Clifton 8, whatever you can find cheaper. Oh, another thing about this list is I tried to put shoes on here that aren't so outrageously priced because if you're just getting into running and run walking, you might not want to spend a bunch of money on a shoe and that's totally, totally acceptable. So what I'd recommend is any shoe on this list, I'd look for the last year's iteration. They don't change much through iterations. Now the Clifton 7, for example, is a shoe that I really enjoy now for walking around. This was a shoe that I used a lot for daily training runs when I first bought it, but it's since transitioned to my walking around shoe and I've actually been enjoying it quite a bit for that. Now this foam here does look very high stack, so you might think that you might squish into it, but the reality with this EVA foam they use in the Clifton 7 is it's slightly firmer, it has a little bit of a wider base, and it's not such an aggressive curve. They have something called an early stage meta rocker, which they say helps make the run feel a bit smoother, but in reality I don't feel it much in this shoe. But the good thing about the shoe is the foam does compress a little bit to absorb a lot of that impact when you're out there running slowly and walking. It does a great job at that. It helps legs feel pretty good. One thing about the Hoka shoes is that they're slightly narrow, so if you have a bit of a wider foot, I'd look to a different shoe on this list. The next shoe on the list is extremely good value and you can often find discount codes, so keep an eye out on the Puma website for the Puma Velocity Nitro. Now, this shoe here was a major surprise. For me, I didn't really think about ever buying a Puma running shoe, but over the last year, they've been doing a lot of great things in terms of the running shoe technology. The Puma Velocity Nitro has been a great surprise to me. It has two different types of foam here. In the heel, you have a slightly firmer foam. In the front, you have a slightly softer foam called their Nitro Foam. So this shoe here feels extremely smooth when you're transitioning from a run to walk interval. So one of the good things I like about this shoe, like I said, in the back, it's a bit more stable so when I'm going slower I don't feel so wobbly with my ankles it just adds a little bit more support for example but when I transition to the nitro foam in the forefoot here it's extremely soft and feels very pleasurable underfoot transitioning from a run to walk interval is extremely smooth thanks to this neutral profile underfoot it's a bit more stable thanks to this denser foam in the heel here so if you're landing on your heel which you're likely going to be doing if you're running slower or walking it's extremely stable and extremely comfortable. The Nitro Foam in the forefoot, extremely nice. Doesn't feel extremely soft so you're not sinking into it, but it does a great job in terms of rum walking. Next up on the list is a shoe that I'm actually wearing for my everyday use right now. Just walking around, going to the store, going to work, all that stuff. And that's the Saucony Ride 13 that I have in hand here. But they also have a Ride 14 that's out now, but just get the Ride 13, you get it a bit of a discount and they didn't change much in their iteration. Now this shoe here has a power run foam underfoot and it feels relatively firm if I'm being honest, but it just 
I find that it works really well for walking around and transitioning from a run to walk interval. Now, this was one of my favorite shoes back in 2020 when it was released in terms of running shoes. So it can do the job of running as well. The upper here is a bit plush. So if you don't like a shoe that has a lot of padding on top of your foot, look elsewhere. But for me, I really enjoy the upper. The lockdown's great. It feels good on foot. Now, one thing about Saki shoes is that they have a little bit hint of stability. So if you go into the store and they say you don't need a stability shoe, but you slightly overpronate, the Saucony shoes are actually a good option for you. But if you're someone that has a perfectly neutral foot strike, the running shoe store should tell you that. One thing to notice if you do have a perfectly neutral foot strike, the hint of stability in the Saucony shoes can kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable. So just keep that in mind if you're trying out the ride line that you can kind of feel that compared to other neutral shoes, it just, there's a little bit of support on the medial side here that just, I don't know. I don't know why they do it, but it can cause problems for some people. But for me, I love the Ride 13 for transitioning from a walk to run interval. It feels extremely smooth. It feels nice to run in. It feels nice to walk around in. Definitely a top pick for me right here. Next up is another Saucony shoe that I don't know if I'd recommend for everyone to buy just because it is a bit more expensive, but they do have some discounts on the older iterations. And that is the Saucony Triumph 18 that I have in hand here. They also have a Saucony Triumph 19 out now, which is a little bit too expensive for my taste. And they also have a Saucony Triumph 17 that you might be able to find for an even deeper discount. And I might actually recommend the Triumph 17 over the Triumph 18 that I have in hand here. But anyway, how does it feel underfoot for run walking? So they have a foam here called Power Run Plus. And the Power Run Plus is a bit softer than what we saw in the Saucony Ride line with the Power Run foam. It's just, just a bunch of names. It essentially is just a slightly softer foam than the Power Run that you get in the Ride line. Another thing compared to the Ride line is that it's a bit higher stack on your foot, a bit more cushion. I used to wear the Saucony Triumph to walk around and all that stuff, and it, it was pretty nice underfoot. It feels a bit squishy and soft and bouncy, but it's not so squishy and soft that I felt that I was really rolling in my ankles when I was going slowly. And thanks to the wider landing platform on the Triumph, you do get a bit of inherent stability in the shoe. The lockdown in the upper here is kind of where I really just, I wasn't a big fan of in the Triumph line, but it might work for you. So I wanted to include it in the list because transitioning from a walk to a run interval in this shoe is pretty fun. I didn't have any issues when I was doing it myself. And another thing to note about the shoe is it's slightly heavy. So if you don't like a shoe that is extremely present on foot, it feels like really big on foot as well. So if you don't like a shoe that's extremely present, you want a shoe to just melt away, don't get the Triumph line, but I want to include it because I think it could be a good option for a lot of people. And last on our list is a shoe that I really was hesitant to put on the list just because I'm not a huge fan of it for walking around, but I see so many people at the gym, so many people walk around on the street, all that stuff, wearing the Nike Pegasus line of shoes. This is the Nike Pegasus 38. There's also a Nike Pegasus 37 that is pretty much the same, just slightly different upper. But if you want a discount, definitely look at the 37, but they also have discounts on the 38. So just pick, go to the store, try them on, see which one works best for you if that's an option for you. So in the shoe here, they have a React foam, which is extremely dense on foot, but they also have an AirPod, which is what made me a little bit hesitant to put the shoe on the list. So for me, when I'm walking around in this shoe, the AirPod that they have in the forefoot here is extremely present and I can really feel it under the ball of my foot here. And it just, it's distracting when I'm out there walking. Like transitioning to a run, I don't notice the AirPod. Like the AirPod just kind of helps me when I'm out there running. But when I'm walking around, the AirPod's just kind of distracting and kind of in my face. And I don't like things being in my face, okay? So you better get out of my face. And like I said at the start of the video, this is all my personal opinion. And for me, not the best shoe for run walking, but I see a lot of people doing it. And this is honestly one of the most standard daily trainers on the market. They have 38 iterations, 38 years of Pegasus running shoes. So people must like it. So if you like the Nike shoes, try out the Pegasus. That would be a good option. I want to include this bonus shoe on the list just because I absolutely love this shoe, but it is a little bit soft, a little bit squishy, but thanks to the wider landing platform on this shoe, it doesn't feel extremely uh, unstable in my opinion. And that is the New Balance Fresh Foam More version three. Now this is a shoe that is extremely soft, extremely high stack height. It may not be for everyone because it does feel extremely present on foot. It has a bit more of a built up upper, kind of sweaty, but for me, I absolutely love the Fresh Foam More version three. So if you're looking for a shoe that has a lot of stack height, it feels very cushioned, it feels pretty squishy, pretty soft, <laughs> check out the Fresh Foam More version three. I absolutely love this shoe. 
but it is pricey. And like I said, I tried to keep the shoes on this list slightly on the cheaper side, or at least being able to find versions that you could buy the previous iteration. For this shoe, I wouldn't recommend buying the previous iteration. They've done a lot of changes here in the version three that makes this shoe what it is. I would not recommend getting the version two. So there you have it, folks. That is five run walk shoes that I would suggest to you, plus a bonus for you folks that want a little bit more cushion in your life. Who doesn't want a bit more cushion in their life, right? All right, folks, let me know. Have you tried any of these shoes for run walking or are you just getting into run walking and none of these shoes really spoke to you? Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to help you find a shoe that might work for you or recommend some shoes that you can go try on in store. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video, folks. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share the video with a friend that is trying to get into run walking and needs a little bit of help trying to find running shoes. Thank you so much. I will catch you on the next one.